Breathless was an extraordinary exhibition that took place in Venice in Carpezzaro last October, I think it was, quite early on in October, before the floods that struck Venice and before the coronavirus epidemic struck Italy and particularly northern Italy before it spread all over Europe and indeed all over the world. And Breathless somehow, looking back, seems a remarkably prescient title because so many people are dying because one of the symptoms of the coronavirus is the lack of breath, i.e. breathlessness, even though it was originally the, uh, the uh, title of a film by Godard made in the 1960s. And the exhibition was essentially about art hailing from London at this time. And again, I think the exhibition was prescient in another way. It was because I think after the coronavirus disappears, the locus, the locus of, a, of, of art is, will become increasingly important. And indeed, in my opinion, has always been important where art is made, where I think there is, there are distinctions between European art and East Asian art and American art and within within Europe itself, distinctions between art made in Great Britain, in Italy, in Germany, in Spain, in France, etc, etc. And uh, this exhibition was about art in London and London has has been and continues to be a very, very creative city for music, for uh, the visual arts, and for uh, uh, pretty well everything that is connected with the so-called, so now to use an unfortunate expression, the creative industries. And uh, this exhibition likes to prove, or to set out to prove, that there is a really exciting new generation of young British artists that have succeeded, have come, as it were, in, in a world which is very different to the world that uh, gave rise to uh, the Sensation Generation, an exhibition that I curated about seven years after Damien Hirst, uh, Tracy Emin, Sarah Lucas, and all their friends suddenly emerged at the very end of the 1980s, and was then uh, that exhibition was somehow uh, encapsulated by that exhibition Sensation. And if one goes back even further, one from, shall we say, to the 1930s, when British art began to, as it were, assert its international position with artists such as Henry Moore and, uh, and Barbara Hepworth, and then later by artists such as Francis Bacon, Leon Kossoff, Frank Auerbach, who, as it were, established a very idiosyncratic art that was very different to the modernist art that was, as it were, perceived to be the norm that was, as it were, hailing from New York, the world of Jackson Pollock, etc., etc., the world of abstract expressionism, but in the meantime has come to be seen as equally, as equally strong, as equally uh, valid as that very different art that was being, that very different, very different international art that was being made at the time. And then came pop art, of course, and uh, uh, London made a very s considerable contribution to what you might call international pop art. Uh, Italy played a big part in that as well at the time, and obviously New York played a big part, but certainly artists such as David Hockney, Alan Jones, Richard Hamilton, Eduardo Parlozzi, and many others made it, took a big part. And that was again, in its turn, succeeded by the world of conceptual art, where again, Italy made a very decisive contribution, but then England made its own very decisive and individual contribution in the works of artists such as Richard Long, uh, Edward, uh, Richard Long, uh, Gilbert and George, Anish Kapoor, Anthony Gormley, etc. And so then came the sensation generation, which certainly took the world by storm. And now I think there is a new generation in London and London and dealing with very, very different issues, very different issues of, that have certainly come to the fore both internationally and locally. Issues. 
at the end of the first decade of the 21st century and into the second decade of the 21st century, uh, second and third decades of the 21st century, issues such as issues, uh, issues of gender, issues of ethnic origin, issues around the media revolution. These have all taken on completely new dimensions as, as indeed has the so-called hoped for green revolution that is supposed to come to the world. And all these issues were in one way or another reflected in this very beautiful, extraordinary exhibition, uh, which included something like 16 artists, I think. The eyes was something of a sketch towards a new version of a new generation of British artists that were represented by artists such as Larry Achimpong, who, as it were, who is a black artist who lives in London, born in London, but is of Ghanaian origin, who is extraordinary installation of, uh, of skateboards, again, resembling a kind of battlefield, uh, a, a, was extraordinarily evocative and, if you like, part of uh, an exhibition that is also, because art comes from art, and there was an extraordinary sense of uh, art that seems, in some ways, like all good art, to find its origins in the past as well. The past being metamorphosized into a real contemporary presence. So there we have Larry's battle that was almost medieval. One can think of the uh, the Blakean world of Tom Hardwick Allen, the, his wonderful butterfly, but huge butterfly wings that reminded me certainly of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Will, the great English artist William Blake at the beginning of the 19th century, the worlds of uh, Matt Copson who has his uh, the world of Matt Copson and his extraordinary tunnel, his hellish tunnel that somehow again seemed to both anticipate the current situation the world is in and the tunnel which out of which we hope to come, but it was a tunnel, if you like, of hell, a, a fiery hell which was populated and dominated by, by a crazy fox-like figure that seemed to be control, in control of the world. One can think too of the uh, the, uh, the dystopian uh, uh, world of Ed Fornelli's, who uh, a dystopia though, which has very much to do with the media hell in which we are living at the moment, from many perspectives. But at the same time, there is also a sense of of, uh, of contemporary painting, not being dead in any way at all. I just think of the beautiful paintings of Eddie Peake, of Celia Hempton, of, uh, of Izzy Wood, uh, which again confirms that it is possible to make painting in a way that uh, seems both very contemporary and different and yet is located in the past in the case of Hannah Quinlan and Rosie Hastings in the world, for example, of Poussin. Uh, quite surprisingly, even though their real subject is male gay subculture. So to combine these two things, to combine as it were the past with the present in this way, was something that I think the exhibition brought home and uh, manifested in a very beautiful way. I think of the uh, the back to the, be the the beautiful hanging crabs, empty crab shells of uh, of Anthe of uh, not of Anthea Hamilton of Alice Channer of Alice Channer, which again spoke of a desiccated nature that needs to be reasserted and come to life again. Again, a very contemporary issue, an increasingly contemporary issue. I think of the, the, uh, the, the sound world evoked by the work of Lydia Udramain, again, an artist from North Africa, who was even in North Africa, and she was, as it were, communicating with her audience, even as the exhibition was going on in some kind of long distance way that was very beautiful and very evocative. So there were many, many 
I, again, I think of uh, Nicholas de Hay and the way his high reliefs, as it were, seem to be both Roman of one way, in one sense, and at the same time reminded one uh, of the inside of the human body. So the body, the language, the, the, the issue of, the, of body and of, uh, is again a, a major issue in contemporary art today. So I think there were many, many issues that were raised by this exhibition in a very beautiful, very colourful and very strange and uh, almost surreal way. And the way the exhibition came to an end after only three weeks by, as a result of the tragic floods that his, hit Venice and, and then uh, f uh, not soon thereafter, after the floods subsided by the coronavirus, which, as it were, emptied Venice and so many other towns of the world, so many metropolitan towns of the world became, as it were, like in metaphysical, meta the, like metaphysical uh, townscapes of the Chirico. But hopefully will rise again to, into a new world in which these artists will con continue, these artists and many others will continue to make work that address, not, uh, not so much consciously, but subconsciously addresses in individual ways the issues that face the world. Okay, Exhibition making is a learning process. Some of the artists I did in fact know quite a long, for quite a long time before the exhibition became a reality or became a project. But others I've discovered and that has given me huge pleasure and I'd like to thank all the artists in the exhibition for their contributions which were all enthusiastic and meaningful. And then of course I would like to thank the Carpezzaro and the Venice Museums for uh, making the exhibition possible. I think I'm thinking of, uh, of uh, the director of all the museums in Venice, Gabriella Belli, and then of course of Elisabetta Barisoni, who is the director of the Carpezzaro, who really was enthusiastic and knowledgeable about this exhibition from the beginning and has written a very interesting essay for the catalogue. There's a very interesting catalogue that has indeed been produced with essays by Harry, by Elisabetta and by myself. And that of course is a souvenir of what has become a sort of ghost exhibition. But the fact that it is a ghost exhibition is part of its beauty and in a funny kind of way is, as it were, a metaphor for what was to come uh, all around the world where exhibitions are being cancelled and things are changing. The art world, the world of art is a changing world now and I think our exhibition was in many respects in the vanguard. And then of course I want to thank Harry Woodlock himself for initiating this exhibition and it was a lot of fun, as it were, exploring film my position as an older person and his ex from his position as a younger person making this exhibition together uh, we had a lot of fun and I like to think the exhibition was a more than worthwhile project. A couple of other things I would like to say concerning the origin of the exhibition. The origin of the exhibition came about uh, as a result of an initiative by a young London curator who approached the Carpezzaro and wonderfully, they ch uh, this, uh, this was a young person called uh, Harry Woodlock who also had come to me and said would I as it were support this initiative and as somebody who had, has done many many exhibitions over many years I was very happy to, if you like, mentor Harry and in the end we became as it were, partners in what turned out to be a beautiful enterprise with the Carpezzaro, who had accepted this uh, extraordinary initiative to, for the very first time, bring together a picture of London in what he called a city of vital exhaustion, and which I called the city that was very much connected with the word out. Out being, of course, in a negative sense, a, uh, a uh, uh, related to the way that 
British politics has chosen to turn its back in a certain sense on Europe, though it, culturally it will never do that. Uh, but also in using the word in the sense that all the artists represent a new kind of self-honesty to do with the word out. They out themselves. They want to tell the world through their art exactly who they are. And this is certainly something that was very clear in the exhibition. I should also speak of other artists such as Alvaro Barrington, who, uh, who is a painter who originally comes from Brooklyn or actually comes from the West Indies via Brooklyn, but has chosen to settle in London and is an extraordinarily talented painter as well, uh, uh, very much in the American tradition, which has always played a big part in London, uh, London art. So that kind of abstraction, this new kind of abstraction, but it was an abstraction that is very much related to his own self-identity, uh, his own very conscious self-identity as a black man, just as the, uh, the bomber jackets of Prem Sahib beautifully kind of uh, encapsulated in perspex, if you like, speak of a fashion world that is very much connected to gay subcultures in London, which again are very much out. Out is the big thing now. People are out, but at the same time vitally exhausted. But then we settled rather surreptitiously on this title, Breathless, which speaks, I think, of our time.